What happens all too often is that we get so wrapped up in these toxic relationships that we miss something really big and that's the fact that narcissists have this way of pushing people away from us. We are kept away from people in our lives who might either take our attention away from the narcissist or worse, those who might support us against them once we realize exactly what we're dealing with. You first have to remember that narcissists have a relationship cycle. It starts with the idealization phase or the love bombing. So let's talk about how love bombing and idealization play into self-isolation in toxic relationships. Now, at first, if this person is a friend or especially a romantic partner, this will seem almost natural. I mean, you might find yourself sort of foregoing time with others for a while, voluntarily, and this is pretty normal up to a point at the beginning of a new relationship. But when you're dealing with a toxic narcissist, it isn't just that you're dealing with a normal sort of early relationship infatuation. Instead, something a lot more sinister is going on here. On a deeper level, whether consciously or not, the narcissist has a goal to isolate you from other people, both for the reasons I mentioned, as well as because it causes you to become more dependent on the narcissist. This ensures that not only will you stick around until they're done with you, but also that you'll be more easily controlled by the narcissist. And in so many cases, you might find yourself self-isolating as a result of emotional exhaustion, the kind that you deal with when you're constantly bombarded with narcissistic manipulation tactics and games they play with your head. And as if that wasn't enough, you might also develop crippling social anxiety during one of these relationships. You go into the devalue phase where things start to get bad and this is where manipulation tactics like exclusion come in. Let's talk about the crippling fear, shame, and guilt related to narcissistic abuse that leads to self-isolation. You know how it feels when you're in a room full of people and and then you still feel completely alone? If you can relate to that, then you might also be able to relate to the shame and the guilt and the fear and the embarrassment of being tortured by a narcissist. And if you're like most narcissistic abuse victims and survivors, you're not always gonna feel comfortable discussing it with the people you're close to, not to mention anyone else, because if you're being honest, the truth is that even though you do your best to put on a good front and generally appear to be totally fine, even though you're totally capable of engaging in friendly conversation and you have good social skills, there is still this underlying feeling of isolation when you are are in a relationship with a toxic controlling narcissist. One that feels a lot like a dull ache. You know it's there and you wanna soothe it, but you also feel like you're really not equipped to do so. You feel like you just can't trust anyone, not even yourself sometimes, thanks to these months or years of gaslighting and manipulation. And once you get through the devalue phase, of course you go in right into the discard phase, which means the narcissist leaves you either emotionally or otherwise. These cycles are common to most narcissists. The exclusion is part of the devalue process. So the narcissist is using this behavior to make you feel like you're not worthy, like you don't deserve to be loved, like you don't deserve to be included in your social activities or whatever else you're dealing with. And listen, my friend, you're not alone here. So often I hear this from my clients. They feel like they don't even know how to be vulnerable anymore and they find themselves feeling really gun shy, constantly on alert. Do you know how that feels? You carry a lot of tension in your body and you have aches and you have pains and you're tired. You know, you're always in fight or flight mode or worse, you freeze. In fact, I would venture to guess that sometimes you even forget how to talk about yourself, much less how you're supposed to connect with others on a deeper level. Even the idea of having to put yourself together sometimes, you know, just enough to go to the grocery store, well, that might feel like too much. So narcissists have a lot of reasons for wanting to isolate you from other people, starting with the fact that very often they're living a double life. But it's bigger than that because here's the thing, when you have people in your life who support Support you, you're going to be far less likely to allow the narcissist to control you. And in some cases, your family or your friends have controlled you up to this point because we do tend to attract narcissists. But very often, anyone who appears to support you or to go against what the narcissist wants for you is a direct bit of competition for you for your attention with the narcissist. They use isolation against us, quite simply because it allows them to better manipulate and control us, like I said. Sometimes they'll even try to isolate you from your own children in the same household, or from the other parent, if your parent is your narcissist. And the fact that so few people actually really get what you're dealing with isolates you even further because you feel a lot of shame for allowing yourself to even be in that situation in the first place. So there are some real serious truths that we have to discuss here. Narcissistic abuse not 
only isolates you from the people in the outside world, but also from your own friends and your own family. So part of the reason they isolate you from other people, including sometimes their own family, is because if you had access to those people openly, then you could probably find out exactly who they really were a little too quickly. That's why sometimes narcissists don't want you to meet their families unless their families are kind of in on it with them. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of flying monkeys or also narcissists themselves. They are so focused on keeping their false self mask on that they'll do almost anything to protect it. They will be very careful about which selves go out to the world what images of their family what beliefs about their family and they'll do whatever they have to to protect that false mask and that false image of themselves to the world even to themselves at times narcissistic abuse really does take a toll on your whole life See emotional abuse, not to mention physical and even deeper forms of psychological abuse like gaslighting can really teach us to shut up and stop talking about ourselves. And this leads to our becoming paralyzed in certain ways, one of which is developing that need to be alone. So we self isolate and even though we might feel lonely on occasion, we just feel safer this way or at least we think we're less stressed. This will prove to be a false sense of peace on some level since isolating ourselves can be dangerous for our physical and mental health. But the really messed up part of all of that is that if and when we do find the strength to leave the narcissist, we look around and we find out we're all alone. Our family might be estranged, our best friends have moved on, and we don't even have anyone to invite out for a cup of coffee. One of the things that narcissists tend to do when it comes to keeping you separate from your family is called the divide and conquer. Because the narcissist is so likely to just really ruthlessly pit family members against one another, which they do directly because of the fact that they want to control everybody, they will do things like treat one kid better than the other. We've talked before about the golden child and the scapegoat, for example. And while they're treating that child better, they'll target that other child. So that obviously puts those two children at odds and they may never ever have a relationship as a result of that. They create this atmosphere in their houses and their homes where everybody's competing for his or her attention, the narcissist's attention and their approval. And because of that, again, they're naturally pitted against one another. If they're always vying for approval, then they can prevent themselves from being attacked by the narcissist. But at the same time, what ends up happening is that if one gets approval and the other doesn't, then essentially they're sort of forced into this position to protect themselves, much like the Hunger Games, you know what I'm saying? Where it's me or you, it's you or me, and what are they gonna do? They're gonna choose themselves, especially as children. And that sort of attitude will continue with them throughout their lives very often, and then you end up with another narcissist. These attacks, they can take a lot of different forms, like they can be narcissistic rage, they can be ridicule, they can be blame, teasing, any of that kind of stuff. When it comes to the partner, the narcissist does things like criticize them, project their own negative qualities onto them bullying them, violently exploding their emotional vomit all over them. If you were ever bullied in school, you might recognize the exclusion tactic. That's when a bully chooses one or more victims and excludes them from the other children in the class by ridiculing them and minimizing them and teasing them or just plain old pushing them away. Narcissists use this same tactic in relationships more frequently than you would expect. They use it to manipulate you and punish you. Excluding people is not just a mean way that kids deal with each other on the playground. It's also a tactic often used by narcissists as a way to control or punish the people they consider their narcissistic supply. For example, let's say that you and your spouse go to church together and at church everyone hangs out in the social hall afterward having donuts. If your narcissist is angry at you or upset with you, they may intentionally stand somewhere you're not and exclude you from the chit chat or the regular banter of the after church crowd. Somehow they won't invite you to get involved in the conversation they're in or you'll be pushed away to take your child to the bathroom or something while the narcissist tells jokes and gets all kinds of attention. Behavior that persistently excludes you from activities in your life, from social gatherings, from all of these things is quite literally emotional abuse. It's painful, it can make you feel awkward and uncomfortable and even if that person isn't doing anything but not talking to you, sometimes that energy feels like it almost pokes you. It's so big and heavy kind of feels like something sitting on your chest and you might find yourself if you're anything like me constantly trying to fix it trying to think of things that you can say that will make them really understand finally what you've been trying to say all this time and unfortunately it 
doesn't always work out that way. Sadly, because of the fact that the partner does everything they can to try to keep the narcissist happy, a lot of times this means the narcissist ends up being enabled by the partner because they sort of have to support them in order to avoid being attacked. So a lot of times the narcissist uses the forced support of the partner to further divide the family. And that of course causes the children then to feel less warmly toward the partner in many cases. The fact is that things like the gaslighting and the manipulation usually lead to something that I don't think a lot of people recognize. You become sort of isolated from yourself, as in you forget who you really are, or maybe you didn't even really know who you really are. Your reality is denied often, and so you start to not really understand the world. You go through a lot of cognitive dissonance, which is a conflict between what you actually see and what you know to be true or what you feel and what you know to be true. The narcissist will project their own corruptness onto their victims, but the cognitive dissonance is created when the narcissist constantly tells you that your reality is different than what it really is and then gets angry when you don't believe it, so you start to question yourself. As long as you agree with the narcissist, it'll be fine, but when the narcissist tells you red is blue and the sky is green and the grass is orange and you disagree, then you start to think that blue is orange. Do you see what I'm saying? This creates cognitive dissonance in you. The cognitive dissonance then undermines your own connection to reality, your sense of reality. It separates you from your own self. You begin to really fundamentally doubt who you are and doubt your own eyes, your own senses, and your own ability to see what's really happening. In case you aren't aware, this is just another way that the narcissist attempts to control you. It is a form of emotional abuse, and it's usually used by narcissists or people with narcissistic tendencies. It is all about putting the narcissist in the position of being in control of the situation. It's designed to help the narcissist make you shut your mouth, as in to avoid avoid you asserting yourself or having any opinion whatsoever. In some cases they do it in order to increase the conflict, make it more difficult for you, avoid resolving the conflict because that makes you uncomfortable and they like that feeling. Sometimes it's about not taking personal responsibility or not making a compromise. And in many cases it's about punishing you for something that they think you did wrong, like a perceived ego slight. Of course, what happens is very often exactly what they want to happen. They get a reaction from you and they feel like they are in control of you. How is it that the narcissist is able to have such power over you? Maybe you were previously the sort of person who had decent friends and at least a few connections, if you're anything like me. Let's talk about the underhanded ways narcissists make us self-isolate. Just like other kinds of narcissistic abuse and manipulation, the narcissist rarely comes right out and says, listen, you need to dump everyone in your life in order to be with me, okay? In fact, they might even straight up tell you that they love your friends and family members. They might charm them and get them on their side even. And at first, the people in your life who go along with the narcissist and fall for their charm, they might be safe, especially if the narcissist can get them to team up with them against you. This might be a little joke at first, but the narcissist hopes for and sometimes gets a good flying monkey out of that deal. You know, someone who will assist them in smear campaigning later. But there will be many people in your life who initially or over time might admit to you that they don't really like the narcissist or who actively challenge them and narcissists don't like that. They might refuse to get the narcissist bad jokes or they might actively question them anytime they sense that the narcissist is lying to them or hiding details. Or there might be people who will act protective of you. You know, like that one friend who sweetly gets up in the narcissist's face the first time they meet him or her and says something like, listen, I really like you, but if you hurt my friend, I will rain down on you like the wrath of a thousand bumblebees or whatever. Yeah, these people are a problem for the narcissist because not only might they point out that you are being emotionally and psychologically abused and or manipulated, but they might even help you stand up to the narcissist and they might help you get away from them. Since this would obviously foil the narcissist's evil plan to dominate and control you, the narcissist sees this person and needs to eliminate them from the equation. And as I'm guessing you're painfully aware of by now, there's no level to which the narcissist will not stoop to get what they want. Because narcissistic 
personality disorder is so hard to detect if you haven't actually had any experience with a narcissist, this kind of adds insult to injury. When you try to talk to someone in your life about it, even often therapists and psychologists, even if they understand theoretically what narcissistic personality disorder is, it's so hard to detect because number one, narcissists don't think anything's wrong with them. And number two, part of their whole shtick is to put that false mask on and make people believe what they're saying is true. And if, if they aren't displaying obvious signs and someone hasn't experienced this type of abuse, they really truly just don't understand and they might think that you're just whiny or you're not really experiencing abuse but you're just thinking too much or you're reading too many articles on the Huffington Post or whatever. So a lot of times when you reach out for support to somebody like your minister or your psychologist or even your own family, you're told, ah, you're imagining things, ah, you're worrying too much, you're thinking too much and even, like I said, therapists will dismiss it and then you're left going, am I the crazy one? You're further isolated, you're further confused and you don't even know what to do with yourself. This is dangerous advice these people are giving you, but when they say, you know, oh, you should go back to that person, or oh, maybe you guys can try again, or oh, he seems really sincere, or she seems really sincere, you have to listen to your intuition, which the narcissist has taught you not to do. You have to trust yourself, and you have to recognize when you're watching videos like this, where you see yourself and you think, are they listening in in my kitchen window? How do they know what I'm going through? That's proof that you're going through something that not a lot of people understand. That's proof that you are being if someone makes your life worse, whether they're physically striking out at you or not, they're not someone you want in your life, regardless of what label you want to put on them. It's about someone being healthy for your life or toxic for your life. Does that make sense? So how do you know if this is happening to you? I know you're probably thinking it should be really obvious when it's happening, right? Well, it isn't. Not always, because narcissists can be very subtle and sneaky. And because narcissistic abuse is so pervasive and so confusing that sometimes you don't even know it's happening to you while you're in the middle of it. And that is exactly why I'm going to share with you today five things that narcissists will say and do to you to cause you to self-isolate during a toxic relationship. Number one, you're my person. I'll always be there for you. If the narcissist is not a parent or a family member, the love bombing and idealization phase will be the stuff of legends and rom-coms alike. Believe it or not, one of the biggest ways non-family narcissists get you to self-isolate is by promising you that they'll always be there for you and that they'll always have your back. It is often the first thing they will audibly say to you that will lead to this unfortunate situation. Why? Because a lot of people who end up in relationships with narcissists were also raised by toxic people and or suffered trauma during childhood. Well, that led to them feeling alone in the world. Without realizing it, this leads us to almost desperately seek someone who is willing to be our person, our person, as in someone for whom we are the most important person in the world, in their lives at least. And whether or not this person is toxic, because of our own issues developed in childhood, we are at tremendous risk of becoming codependent. This means that we grew up in such a way that we didn't feel loved and supported, and we're so happy and surprised that someone wants to be our person finally, that we allow ourselves to be seduced and hooked by the idea of it, which brings me to number two. This person doesn't like me and you need to choose me or them. Oh yeah, the old me or them thing. The ultimate ultimatum that no one should ever have to deal with. Sadly, is another common thing that narcissists say to make you isolate yourself from your family. Not only do they not want you to be with your friends, but they also don't want you to have anything to do with your family, especially when they might emotionally or otherwise support you. They will manipulate you into believing that your family and your friends don't seem to like them, or they will do something to make sure that's the case. And whether anyone they're pushing away actually said or indicated any issues with the narcissist, well, that won't really matter. The narcissist will literally say whatever they need to say to get your full and undivided attention, at least when and if they want it. Of course, if you don't immediately dump the offending person, the narcissist without remorse will pull out the old narcissistic injury card. And they'll tell you how hurt they would be if they were forced to leave you for not dumping this person. Now you're put in a position that leaves you with almost no choice, which of course brings me to number three. Your best friend did something awful. I just thought you should know. As you know, narcissists are pathological liars and at times they are so good at it they could even pass a lie detector test. That's because they have a very limited ability to empathize on a genuine level and because they aren't likely to feel remorse. This is especially true when they feel upset and threatened which they are bound to do when you're close to someone who isn't them. And your friends, especially your best friend, that person could be a serious threat to the 
narcissist's sense of control. That's why the narcissist will do the unthinkable to push them away. For example, they might make you isolate yourself from your friends by telling you that they're saying not so nice things behind your back. And you might believe them because since they'll focus this little campaign on your shortcomings and insecurities, you know. For instance, if you have a habit of laughing nervously, the narcissist will pick that up and not hesitate to tell you that your friends make fun of how you do that, how you laugh. And you can't help yourself at times, so you would immediately believe what the narcissist says. That's gonna make you cut your friends off. Or, and this is the worst if you ask me, they might make up a story about a specific friend. Might be a total lie, but the narcissist would throw in enough facts and so-called evidence that you'll at least doubt the person in question, if not totally fall for the lie. For example, they might say your best friend made an inappropriate move on them in some way. This will follow the narcissist having told you or your friend that they found this friend attractive. And then they might have started little innocent flirtations in front of you and later confided to you that your friend made a comment that turned them on or saw or heard something that otherwise got their attention from that person. Even if you don't believe it at first, it's gonna cause you to have little doubts about them in the back of your head, which will in the end cause you to pull away from them. And along with your own mind's ability to connect details and to feel protective of your relationship, this is gonna change the way you feel about your friend in the end. And that is going to lead to a moment of desperation in which you cut off contact, either directly or indirectly, and that's exactly what they want. You'll lose touch and before you know it, you're not even friends anymore. Meanwhile, the narcissist is getting exactly what they want, you isolated and under their focus. Control. That brings me to number four. Your family doesn't think much of you, do they? Whether your family is amazing and supportive or painfully toxic, the narcissist does not want them in the way. That's why they will often say things to you about how they notice your family doesn't respect you in any way, shape, or form. Or they'll say your family uses you or that they just don't care about you at all. They'll have evidence about it. They'll say they've seen this before and they'll point out little idiosyncrasies that you'll start to hyper-focus on if you're not careful, such as the way your mom's left eye twitches every time you talk about your relationship or the way your sister rolls her eyes when you talk about your dream of writing the great American novel. And to really put the nail in this coffin, the narcissist will do their very best to exacerbate and exaggerate actual issues that you shared with them over time about different people in your family. They're gonna amplify and magnify anything that you've shared and actively cultivate your self-doubt and doubt in general, your anger, the feeling of betrayal, all that stuff. This will begin to poke at you over time and the narcissist will keep pushing it. Maybe even blatantly lying and saying things that aren't true, like I said, or things that have just a whisper of truth to them, just enough, you know, such as pointing out how the family's always talking about you behind your back and since you probably already know that like every family talks about everybody behind their backs among themselves, you're going to assume that they're telling the truth. Why wouldn't you? What kind of person would want to intentionally push someone's family away from them? What kind of person would intentionally want to hurt someone that they claim they love? Yeah, that was a little sarcasm, but all joking aside, you will find yourself falling for this stuff, especially during the love bombing or idealization phase. If it happens later, you might even push the family away in order to show the narcissist how loyal you can be to them, or even to get them off your back. But only rarely will you consciously understand what is going on while it's happening because the narcissist can be so sneaky and subtle in their manipulation. Speaking of which, that brings me to number five. I'm the only one who really loves you, you know. It's us against the world. Yeah, this kind of manipulation might look different in different parts of different relationships. For example, let's say the narcissist in your life is your spouse or partner and they pulled you in with promises of having someone on your side or of a soulmate or whatever your version of that was. But ultimately, you were brought in thinking you were getting your dream person. They're gonna pull the old us against the world thing which will initially feel really good to you because you're gonna feel like you belong somewhere and like you're a part of something special, maybe for the first time in your life. Or if the narcissist was your parent or your parental figure, it looked more like I'm the only person who really loves you so you better do exactly what I want or you risk being completely abandoned in the world. Love ya! In either case, it looks like if you don't do what I want you to do, you will be alone. And the narcissist knows instinctively that everyone's secretly afraid on some level of ending up completely alone and unloved in the world, whether we admit it or not. So in order to properly secure you as a source of narcissistic supply, they're gonna play on your very human fear of abandonment. And if you do happen to have a touch of codependency, this is gonna feel like a life or death decision which the narcissist will seduce you into making before you even realize what has happened. The bottom line is that narcissists make you self-isolate for control, manipulation, and to secure you as a narcissist 
narcissistic supply. In the end, just know that without hesitation, without remorse, the narcissist can easily and methodically manipulate you into believing that your friends and your family are no good for you for one reason or another. You will believe the narcissist either because you're head over heels in love with them, or you do it out of fear because you don't want to lose them, or maybe just because that's how it's always been. This is your parent. Either way, once you see the truth that they are abusive and toxic, it's going to be too late because they have managed to, in many cases, make you push everyone out of your life. And then you're alone. This is going to leave you struggling to find the support that you need. And if the narcissist has their way without access to the help you need to get out of that relationship. So how are you supposed to find support when you you've been completely isolated? Well, there are a lot of different options. There are tons of online support groups, some in person support groups. Me personally, I offer several options. You can join span on Facebook. Just go to queenbeing.com slash span. But if you have friends, even if they don't fully understand friends who truly support you, sometimes they can listen and sometimes just having them listen is enough. But I truly think that having other survivors to talk with has made all the difference in the world for so many different people. I also offer coaching and a lot of other options. I've got a podcast. Hit up queenbeing.com to get a full scale of what the options are. If, if this situation sounds familiar to you and you're struggling to figure out how to deal with it, you might want to watch this video, which I'll also link in the description. Now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you found yourself in a situation like this where you have self-isolated during a relationship with a narcissist? And if so, how did you deal with it? And what tips would you offer another survivor in the same position? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. And before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm going to leave for you right there and right there. And while you're here, hit the subscribe button right over there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.